The glycolysis and citric acid cycle are part of the primary metabolism. As discussed in the previous video, proteins, lipids and nucleic acids are also primary metabolites. Secondary metabolites give the organism better survivability and adaptability to their surroundings. There are numerous secondary metabolites, many of which we encounter in everyday life. Terpenes, for example, are responsible for the fragrance of many plants. The basic building block of terpenes is isoprene and is made from pyruvate. Starting with one isoprene unit, the molecule is called a hemiterpene with five carbon atoms. Attaching two hemiterpenes together will form a monoterpene of ten carbons, such as menthol and limonene. Adding another hemiterpene will form a sesquiterpene of fifteen carbon atoms. Coupling two of these sesquiterpenes together forms the backbone of steroids such as cholesterol and testosterone. Adding another hemiterpene to the sesquiterpene forms a D-terpene of 20 carbons. Coupling two D-terpenes together and you have the backbone of carotenoids such as beta-carotene and lycopene. Another group of natural compounds that we encounter every day are phenolics with phenyl as its basic building block. Phenyl is a benzene ring with a hydroxyl group attached. When more hydroxyl groups are attached it is called a polyphenol, such as gallic acid. Coupling multiple gallic acids together with glucose will form structures that are called tannins, for example tannic acid. Tannins are found in the bark of trees such as oak and is used for the tanning of leather. Flavonoids is another group of well-known phenolic compounds that give color to many plants. An example is quercetin from the onion, which can be used to dye textile. The last phenolic compound we will discuss is lignin, one of the main components of the cell wall. Lignin is built up mainly of three molecules, paracumaryl alcohol, coniferyl alcohol and sinapyl alcohol. The next group of secondary metabolites commonly encountered are the alkaloids. A common feature between alkaloids is the presence of a nitrogen atom. Furthermore, many alkaloids are toxic and give the plant a bitter taste. There are three groups of alkaloids, true, proto and pseudo-alkaloids. The true alkaloids are made from amino acids and have a nitrogen atom incorporated in their ring structure. Well-known examples are nicotine and morphine. Proto-alkaloids are also derived from amino acids, but they do not have their nitrogen atom incorporated in their ring structure. Examples are the hallucinogenic mescaline and the stimulant adrenaline. Pseudo-alkaloids are alkaloids that are not derived from amino acids, such as caffeine, which is derived from a nucleic acid, and the toxin solanidine, present in trace amounts in potatoes, which is derived from a steroid. The last group of natural compounds that will be discussed is the group of polyketides. As the name implies, these compounds have many ketone groups. One of the simplest are the quinones, such as benzoquinone, derived from benzene. Naftoquinone, such as Lawson, that is known for making henna tattoos. Another example of quinones is anthraquinone, such as alizarin isolated from the root of Rubia tinctorum, which is used as a textile dye. Some very potent fungal toxins belonging to the group of aflatoxins, such as aflatoxin P1, are also polyketides. Many antibiotics also have polyketide structures, such as the tetracyclines. As the name implies, these molecules have four ring structures. And finally, macrolide antibiotics that have large ring structures of 14, 15 or 16 carbon atoms, such as erythromycin. As we saw, the world of natural compounds is enormous. In the bio-based economy, professionals are constantly looking for opportunities to use these compounds, secondary and primary, as chemical building blocks for consumer products. With this video, we have given you a brief insight into the topic of natural compounds. I hope you enjoyed it and we wish you the best of luck with the assignments.